Hey guys, how's it going today? Guys, we are in for a treat. I have a gentleman by the name of Philip Vincent. Philip Vincent has over 25 years of real estate investing experience. Um, he's done tons and tons of deals. But today, specifically, specifically, we're going to go ahead. We're going to talk about the senior living space. Specifically, we're going to talk about mom's house. Hey, Philip, how's it going? How you doing today? Good, Gerald. Thank you for having me on here today. All right. All right. So first and foremost, talk to me about mom's house. Sure. I mean, I've been a real estate guy for 25 years and I won't bore you guys with that long story, but I'll just kind of su simplify it by saying I kind of did this business backwards. I built my first house when I was 20 years old and today I'm 45. So I started off in development and new construction and I worked my way back to wholesaling. And so a lot of people listening today might be starting off as a wholesaling and saying, hey, I'd like to work my way up to development. And the, and right. the answer is maybe. Um, <laughs> the, the answer is uh, the older you get, you realize uh, something called hassle factor. And, you know, um, you can make a lot of money doing any business depending on the hassle factor. And I think real estate's one of those things. It's, you know, nobody will argue with us that it's, it mints the most millionaires out of any other business is, is real estate. And so the question we have today is, how do we find our leads, right? Almost all my buddies are, are real estate people. When we get together, we talk about lead sources. It's not what to do. You know, and by the way, guys, I, I always find it funny when people identify as a wholesaler. Wholesaling is not an identity. It's not an identity, everyone. That is a, that's a disposition strategy. That's one of 28 <laughs> disposition strategies, right? And so, and I think what they're saying is I'm just getting started in the business a lot of times is what they meant by that. And that's fine. Everybody starts somewhere. And, and we all know, Gerald, that, you know, real estate will change your life. And so, so today we're going to talk about an acquisition strategy. What is mom's house? What is mom's house, right? Um, in 2011, I discovered the stereotype of most of my sellers. And it was that, you know, dad had passed away eight years ago and mom's been doing the best she can at the house. You know, she's lived there forever and she just fell down again. And this time she's going to have to have a hip surgery and she's going to go to rehab for three weeks. And at the end of the three weeks, they say, hey, mom can't live on her own anymore. And Gerald and Philip are brothers. And we look at each other. We go, what? say what now? Say what? And then we go, what do you mean she can't move back home? You know, and, you know, and now we're like scrambling because Gerald and I don't know where mom's going to get the best care. We have no idea maybe what her finances are. Um, and a lot of times, in fact, it's about 95% of people don't have enough money to write the average $6,000 a month check for long-term care. They need to sell an asset. And so I go to my more affluent brother, Gerald, and I say, hey, you know, mom's pension's 2200 and this is six grand. You're going to write that check for uh, for 4800 aren't you? Or 3800 And you're going to be like, yeah, for, for like a month. And then and then you're going to say, and, Phil, and now we need to sell, say it with me, we need to sell mom's house. <laughs> you're going to say it quick, right? We're both going to say it quick because, right, well, we, right. I mean, we have only so much money. Everyone, you know, unless we're really, really affluent. But, you know, for 95% of Americans, they need to sell an asset to pay for this care. And they're only in there on average, you know, 21 to 28 months. And so this is a short time frame. And, and the thing about boomer, seniors, boomers, they own $10 trillion in real estate outright. They own all the, they own all the real estate outright, guys. Most equity right. is in their homes. And so what we do simply is Mom's House helps families unlock their equity for parents' care so they can get mom to care quicker. Because what happens when they go the retail route, a lot of times, is it delays that care six to eight months. And here's why. When you buy somebody's forever home, I always lovingly say, you know, mom wasn't quite a hoarder. She was a bit of an aggressive collector. Mm -hmm. You ever got a mom that's like that? And like, she's not a hoarder, but she's a kind of an aggressive collector. You know, and when I think of mom's house or grandma's house or however you want to say this, you know, most mom's houses, you know, even if it's clean, I call it grandma clean. You know, it's, yeah. it got the new roof because of the hailstorm in 2017. It got the new hot water heater because the other one blew up. Right. She She's lived in this house so long, Gerald, that she got her new kitchen. She got her new kitchen in 1991 because she's right. lived there since 1973. And now that kitchen needs to be replaced. You know, they, they, these are, you know, I take great pride in getting to buy someone's forever home. And so any investors listening right now, unless you're driving, don't do this. But close your eyes. Think about the last five houses you bought and tell me what were their average age of the seller. And I think in that moment, people go, man, I think I've been buying houses from seniors already. I don't buy a lot of houses from 28-year-olds, but I buy a lot of houses from 82-year-olds, right? Because they have equity. They have a house that's dated. They have a house we can add value to. They don't want to get it retail ready. 
there's some life event, namely moving into senior living. And I think for anyone listening, your, your real estate life changes when you're, when you stop spraying and praying with your marketing and only work with people that have raised their hand and said, I need to sell my house now. Right. And, and that's mom talk, right? It, it, it's yeah. building relationships in senior living. Now, I want to be clear for everyone listening. We're not talking about creating a senior living community or a home, right? That's right. not what I do. I know mom's house isn't a senior living community that people move into. Right. But we right. can help everyone that's moving any parent into any community, whether it's a big box or a small RAL, as they're called. Anyone that's making that transition from a home to the new care home, whatever level of care that is, that transitions when they need to unlock that equity. That's the flashpoint of when they say we need to sell mom's house. So, because my, my sister and I were going through this right now, it's funny, you, you're, you're, and I, I'm, I'm so glad because the timing is on point. We contacted a place for mom. We contacted caring.com. Mom right now is in a senior facility in Charlotte, North Carolina, and it is happening to us right now. And so, Talk to us about this thing called the silver tsunami. Sure. Everyone, Gerald, I don't know if you and your sister feel like you're on an island trying to find help. You're scrambling, trying to find good advice. Yes. And you, okay, I don't want to put words in your mouth, right? You, you guys feel that way, right? You're scrambling yes. to find good advice. Yes. And you've got caught in the web of those, I won't say their names, those two places you just named. Yeah. I had a, I had some students in my office the other day. There was about 80 people in my office. And I asked who has gone through this or is going through this currently. 80% of the room raised their hand, Gerald. There's a yeah. lot of you and your sister out there. And yeah. everyone thinks they're on an island. And mom's yeah. house is a giant awareness. It's a movement to say, hey, you guys have more options than you realize on how to, un and, and house is one of them, right? Unlocking the equity out of the house is one thing. Yeah. Um, where people are usually sadly mistaken is like, mom's beanie baby collection they think it's worth a million dollars and then it's just not you know our stuff is very rarely what's going to pay for care and it's almost always that house right because even if mom didn't have a bunch of stocks yeah. a lot of this generation owned a house they were homeowners yeah. that 10 trillion dollars and you know we always hear about this um, transfer of wealth we keep reading about and that silver yeah. tsunami you spoke of gerald we're not getting that money because mom's going to live parents are living longer yeah. They're going to sell that equity pre-probate before mom passes away. They're going to sell. They're going to need you and your sister are going to need to sell that house to pay for mom's care because that's the best thing we can do with mom's equity is help mom have the best care she can. And yeah. so finding the right care is number one. Finding, finding mom the right care is number one. And so mm -hmm. there's placements, placement agents out there. There's uh, companies like what you named. And so it's hyper local geographic demographic monetarily there's so many decisions you have no idea what level of care and you know i always think about my own wife putting my kids in school we can't go to that school it's only a seven out of ten and well you're moving your mom into someplace you know and, and you want to make the right decision because it's, it's not my kids schooling it's your mother wouldn't we do anything for mom yeah we would right we would and so we want to find mom the best care and very quickly right behind that we go how the heck are we going to pay for this? And the world thinks that Medicaid is going to pay for everything. And, and they get Medicare and Medicaid confused. So Medicare is a, uh, a healthcare plan. So your drugs and doctors, Medicaid is more if <laughs> it's, it's when you have no more money, right? In the state of Missouri, I don't know what yours is there in North Carolina, but you have to have less than $5,000 in total assets to be eligible for Medicaid. And so the, this term is called spend down. So even if mom has some money, that money has to be spent down before she'd be eligible for that. And I think, you know, you asked me the question, I'm long winded answer here about the silver tsunami. There's so many boomers coming right now um, that our own government doesn't know what to do. They'll never build enough Medicaid housing to house them that they're going to really, the next 15 to 20 years of real estate, they're going to really start looking at ways to subsidize them staying in their homes. So something what I call uh, the sell and stay model, right? Mm -hmm. We want mom to have the best care, but at some point, even with your own mother's journey, you went from, hey, we have somebody come in a couple hours a day to this isn't enough, mm -hmm. right? There was probably some moment mm -hmm. where you knew, Gerald, and I bet you knew about it a little early, but at the yes, same time, it ain't easy to, right? I mean, right. I mean if you want to tell your story, that's because because it's, it's unique to you because you haven't lived yeah. it, but this is happening to everyone, Gerald. I'll, hey, everyone's going to be working in senior living, whether we want to or not. So we might as well embrace it and and have more awareness about it. So um, how is mom doing today? That's the first question I want to ask. Is she happy with her community? 
Uh, she's adjusting. Let me just say that she, she she's enough. adjusting, and it's it's interesting, and I'm I'm glad you're 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 talking about this specifically, and the term that you just use is like you know everybody's going to be in the senior care um, industry, and we all are if you really think about it, right? If you really think about it, uh, mom is okay right now. Um, I need to go ahead because I'm in Georgia. She's in North Carolina, so I need to make a drive sometime next week to go ahead and check on mom. <laughs> but what I wanted to ask you specifically, so um, what is, so me as a care agent or an investor versus dealing with a licensed real estate agent, you know what yeah. I mean? Talk to me about those two um, and the benefits of working with an investor. Sure. I mean, I could, I could literally talk about this subject for the next three straight days. We could just start yeah. talking, right? So I'll try yeah. to make it as eloquent as possible. Um, in some cases, the best thing for the family to do is list their house and get top dollar. It doesn't everyone want top dollar. Yeah. I love that word. You want top dollar. I want top dollar. Our senior parents want top dollar. How do you get to top dollar? But then, you know, if you guys go on Zillow right now and type in your home, it'll show you estimated sales costs. And it's, it's right. 9%. 9% yeah. for, for commissions and fees right. and all that. You're, right. you're paying 9% if you pay, sell retail because yeah. of, because of commission. So you're not netting a hundred grand on a hundred grand house. You're netting 91 if yeah. the cost is 9%, right? So yeah. what is top dollar? Yeah. Um, what real estate agents have done is they've convinced the world that you have to have a real estate agent to sell your house. Yeah. Do you need, yeah. do you legally need to have a real estate agent to sell your house, Gerald? No, no. Okay. So, so we know that, right. But the world yeah. doesn't know that they, they think you do. And so what I've found is, and you know, I hate putting blanket answers over a trillion dollar industry, but that's what I'm trying to do right now. What I found is you live in Georgia, mom's in North Carolina. You are, you're my perfect average. Cause I bet that's about 400 miles. The average it, child it, lives 400 miles away, Gerald. That's the average child lives 400 miles away. I don't want to do a rehab that's across town in St. Louis. I guarantee you don't want to do a, and you're a real estate man. <laughs> and you don't want to do a no dang rehab in three states away. Are you kidding me? Two states. Okay. And you're in the business, right? Now, now take right. us out of the equation because we're real estate people and just do right. the layperson and go, of course they don't want to do a rehab. And what does the real estate agent ask them to do? They say, clean this place out. Yep. Let's update this, 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 and, and this, and then we can get top dollar. And so, in a world where I don't know what your mom's, we don't need to get in the nitty gritty of your mom, but your mom's spending money right now, her money, and I hope she has a lot of it so she can be comfortable, right? It's the, that clock starts ticking on, hey, we're going in the hole every single month. The real estate agent asked us to do these rehabs. Yeah. And guys, if you, can, if you can learn anything from this thing today, write this down, cost versus value guide. Google the words cost versus value guide. They've been around for over 20 years. You can go to your local market. You can type in a deck and it'll tell you what the deck cost. And then it'll tell you what value you got. And people are shocked because they think if they rehab, they're going to get more money for their house. And the cost versus value guide proves the average in the United States, a tear out of a bathroom and a replacement of a new bathroom costs $23,000 is the average. And your value you get back is like 13. So how many times do you want to lose 10 grand? Right. You do a deck for 15 and you get 7,500 back. Great. Right. Great. You just lost 7,500. And, and I'll do a good one. Like a garage door, the average cost for a new garage door is 3,800. You, you get 92% of your money back. Oh, I only lost 8% that time. I mean, you see what I'm saying? Like it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it yeah. doesn't get better. Yeah. And you know, a lot of these houses, they need 23 things done. And it, very quickly, the family's like, uh, brother, I don't think we should rehab this thing at all. It looks like, you know, in a, in a time when a family needs money, for me to get top dollar or back to that hassle factor, for me to get that full retail, if I got to do all this stuff and lose all this money, it, we got to start talking about the net number. What did the family net? And right. one of them is in three weeks with no hassle. And one of them yeah. is six to eight months from now with a ton of hassle. And right. I can show you guys on paper, the numbers are very similar to each other. And right. no sane person chooses the hard route if they get presented with both the right way. I love that. I love that. You know what? So tell me if if you can think of one deal uh, that sticks out in your mind of somebody that you helped. If you could think of what's the most memorable deal where the family was like, like almost in, falling in tears or they were just like so appreciative of your services. Can you think about that one deal that sticks out in your mind? 
Yeah, the social the social capital I make is really high. I want to talk about the F word of fulfillment. I have fulfillment every day, and there's not one, Gerald. I get hugs from guys and gals all the time when they realize in a time when everything's going bad, bad news, bad news, bad news, that something's going to go easy. I can, like, see the weight come off their shoulders, and they're like, wow. So there's fulfillment in what I do when you do this the right way. And I want to be clear, this, what I do here at mom's house is right for some investors that are listening. Yeah. Yeah. Not all yeah. Gerald. And, yeah. and and I usually use this analogy of a crock pot and a vase. Right. Right. <laughs> we, right. we got a lot of crock pots. I'm a crock pot, right? We got a lot of right. crock pots in our industry, but it yeah. needs to be more vase, like beautiful, gentle, loving, yeah. kind. That's more what a vase is. And so yeah. it's one of the, it's one of the, things that I've seen that like females, I think are better suited. I'm being stereotypical again, but they're better suited because of that E word of empathy. Yeah. You know, they have it more in them than we do. So sometimes yeah. I got to slow down. And, you know what I mean? You know that, and that's just the nature of senior living. But I, what I get on the backside is fulfillment of helping, you know, I take great pride in getting to buy someone's forever home, helping their parents get to care quicker. Um, the past week I bought, you know, two or three houses where, you know, the, uh, the mom's moving in senior living, the dad's in Oklahoma cause they were actually divorced. So the son's yeah. in town, he's got a great job. The last yeah. thing he wants to do. And this house needed everything, Gerald. He's, yeah. he's got money. He's not going to touch any of it because he understands the value of his time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that right there is, it's, it's interesting that you say that one of the things I, I teach my, my audience is, um, real estate. And we get it, we get it messed up lots of times in the real estate investing space, right? Real estate actually is people first, then real estate. It's people first, then real estate. We get it messed up, maybe because a lot of people look at YouTube or they're influenced by different people and yada, yada, yada. And so it really just sounds like, um, and that's my next question is the marketing aspect of it. This is more of a word of mouth type of marketing am i right versus relationships relationship with people you said it right gerald this is a yeah. people business yeah. and when you do it right you end up being a tool for those people because bluntly everybody cares about what's in it for them yeah. so all those people that are having those hard conversations with people like you and your sister right now yeah. what if they gave you some really good you're looking for good advice and when they say hey call philip he'll come in and make you no obligation on your offer on, the, on mom's house and the stuff you're like, yeah. okay, I went, <laughs> cool. I'm only in town this weekend. I got to drive across. I, I, I need to do something with it. Right, right. You know, right. and so when you get that, ref hey, a warm referral is the strongest thing in the world. And when you get a warm referral from an attorney or the community themselves or a placement mm -hmm. agent or your VA aid and attendance person, that, that vouch is so powerful. And I always say, you know, you said it best. People think about the bricks and sticks too much. We need to think about the, the, the humans that we're buying from. Yeah. And so in the relationship building, we teach you how to build, um, there's one night stands and there's 50 year marriages. We're teaching people how to build 50 year marriages with people in senior living. Cause that, cause right. the next 15 guys, the next 15, 20 years, this is going to go up. There's yeah. that much traffic yeah. coming, right? Yeah. There's yeah. that much traffic coming. Yeah. Yeah. I love that it. That tsunami love it. is here. So the perfect, let's say for instance, somebody, somebody looking to get started, what would be the fastest way for somebody to go ahead and look to go ahead and get started? I mean, connecting. Yeah. Them. Here's my fear for everybody listening. You're here in its communities. And so me in 2011 walked in with my big personality and I said everything wrong. I just walked in the front door, put my hand on, I said, here's I'm Philip and I buy houses. And you know, no. And I'm an investor and I'm an agent and I don't show up as an investor or an agent. I'm a senior transition specialist. I disclose those things if I, when, when I need to, right. And you know, I, that's, I'm not hide it. Right. But I, I don't lead with that because yeah. let me tell you why, when you start the word I word, we can say investor all day long on this podcast, but in yeah. senior living, all they hear is Donna, 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 you know, shark. All they hear is shark. Oh shit. An investor said, why not shark? <laughs> Even worse is if you show up and you say you're a real estate agent, let me yeah. ask you this, Gerald, when was the last time you met somebody new and they said they're a real estate agent? You're like, tell me more. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 they already know what that is. Happen. And no. well, and it, and it slows, they slow down the process of that 28 month. There might be a six month, eight month delay in front yeah. of moving mom into care because we got to get our money right before we move mom into senior living. Yeah, getting that money right is the retail world. You said you wanted me to compare the two ones in three weeks and ones yeah. in six or eight months. 
Right. And if you net the same, then yep. that's why mom's house is getting traction because the industry, senior living industry gets it. They want people to move in quicker. They need people to move in quicker. Bluntly, yep. mom needs to move in quicker because yep. she needs to get to care faster. Let's don't delay that. Yep. The, the, the daughter, Judy, you and your sister, right? You want mom to get the best care quicker. You want to fix this problem as best you can. Yeah. We try to make every decision around you guys, by the way. The adult children, I try to put you first because the industry needs it. And then, of course, real estate investors, we're the easiest. Of course, you're looking for highly motivated, warm referrals. They have 100% equity. A house you can add value to. It's a free lead. I mean, yeah. so, you know, we're, we're, the investor role is almost like the easy part. Of course, that's what yeah. you're looking for. But it only works if you build the relationship the right way. And so you asked me how to get started.